poker is a game where you have to make decisions uh, under conditions of incomplete information, under conditions of uncertainty, where, and this is true of all card games, because you don't see your opponent's hand. So it's true of bridge as well. Um, the difference between bridge and poker is that you have this bidding thing that's going on. You're, you're betting at, e at each stage. So um, when you have a game where all the information is available to you, where you can see your opponent's whole position, it becomes mathematically solvable. So, for example, checkers is a game that we've mathematically solved. Uh, we're getting very good at close on chess. You know, I mean, chess is more complicated, but, but it is potentially solvable. Um, one of von Neumann's colleagues said to him, why didn't you invent game theory based on chess? And he said, chess is just a calculation. Poker is a game. So because poker is this sort of, um, you know, poker is this exercise in decision making under conditions of uncertainty, which is really what we're doing in the business world, because the business world is about negotiating, not knowing your opponent's position. If we think about, uh, you know, people on the opposing side of the negotiation table, um, we can look at poker and we can say, what kind of decisions work well in poker? And we can really apply that to lots and lots and lots of other circumstances, whether it's from the way that you should bid. Because um, interestingly enough, betting is actually kind of a misnomer for what you do in poker because betting has to do with placing money and then waiting for an outcome. And in poker, you actually normally don't get to the outcome because your opponent folds. Uh, so most hands don't go to showdown. And you're betting along the way anyway, which is actually what bidding is. So you're bidding back and forth in poker. And that's a lot of what business is. It's this bid back and forth scenario. So uh, we can learn a lot about what kind of bidding strategies work well in poker in terms of being able to apply those to business. Um, we can also learn a lot in terms of sort of probability theory, sort of going back to uh, that idea of um, the fact that outcomes and decisions aren't uh, perfectly correlated. They're only probabilistically correlated. So one of the problems in business is that a lot of times you don't see the results, good or bad, of a decision for a very, very long time, whereas in poker you see it immediately. Um, so if we understand the strategies that are working well in poker, which we can do uh, very immediately because the feedback loop is fast, uh, we can then apply those to situations where the feedback loop is actually very long and slow, so we can't necessarily connect it up properly and get some clarity on, on what kind of decisions work well in those situations. So it's a lot of the negotiation stuff. It's a lot of understanding things like uh, some decision biases that come up in poker, like uh, sunk cost is a very strong one in poker, which has to do with thinking that uh, resources that you've invested in the past should have an effect on your decisions going forward, which is actually uh, a very bad way to think. Um, so there's some of that stuff. So it's actually a lot of different ways. So, uh, for example, one of the topics that I talk about a lot is um, ultimatums. How do we get people to act the way that we want them to act when they're not currently doing what we want them to do, um, which is usually handled by an ultimatum, which is you do this or else. That's something that we do in poker a lot. How does that apply? What, we can what can we learn from the way that we handle those kinds of situations in poker in terms of dealing with ultimatums in real life? Um, some other things that, uh, some other cool stuff that you can look at is, um, uh, for example, there's, there's this piece which is we can talk about making good decisions and what that decision chain looks like. And, and a lot of what I do with, for example, Decision Education Foundation is getting kids to understand good decision making chains. So, you know, identifying what the problem is, what are my possible alternatives, what are my values, what are the consequences of each alternative, that kind of stuff. But, What's really interesting is that you have this piece, which is, am I thinking rationally? Because you can go through the whole decision train perfectly, but if you're not thinking rationally about it, then it's not going to be a good decision. And that's a problem that we have in poker all the time because of this issue of tilt, which is getting emotionally upset about something that's happened in the past, causing you to then make bad decisions going forward. So I talk about the way that poker can really teach us to deal with that, am I thinking rationally piece so that we know that when we're actually making these decisions in real life that we're making good decisions and not emotional decisions. And poker is actually very helpful in that.